35 years I've worked on water quality issues uh, and, and when I had the opportunity to chair the Source Water Protection Committee, I thought this would be a nice way to go out, uh, that we actually make some, some plans and, and some regulation that will protect the drinking water for the next generation. Over the last uh, five years, the, the committee was made up of, of 21 uh, members plus three First Nations. And over the last five years, the committee has really embraced the idea of protecting source water. And uh, I, I think in the beginning, there were, was more thought of, of uh, protecting their industry. I think today there's more thought about protecting the water. And uh, I, I'm really pleased how the committee has worked over the last five years. And I think we're going to have a plan developed that will really make sense to the municipalities and, and to the people that are going to use it. Uh, the, uh, the, the region is comprised of three source protection areas. Uh, they're based on the areas of the conservation authorities, the watersheds of the conservation authorities. There's the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority, the Lower Thames Valley Conservation Authority, and the St. Clair Region Conservation Authorities. Uh, the, the region includes parts of up of 49 municipalities. Uh, some of them are just very small uh, parts, but uh, uh, there's a large number of municipalities that have to cooperate to protect the drinking water sources. part of the Provincial water, Groundwater Monitoring Network and we have 24 monitoring wells across the Upper Thames watershed. Um, each of the wells has a data logger similar to this that records temperature and water level hourly. Um, we also uh, take manual measurements to um, ground truth this, this data on the data loggers. is a groundwater flow model which show, is very similar to the Upper Thames watershed. So we have shallow overburden aquifers and intermediate aquifers and deep aquifers and then we have bedrock aquifers. You can see the water level is higher in the shallow well than in the intermediate and then the deeper one is, is, the, is the lowest one. So the groundwater is moving downward through the aquifer. Groundwater moves down uh, vertically until it hits the water table and then it moves horizontally. And you can see this by the, uh, the color of the, um, the, the contamination coming out of the septic tank, the underground storage tank. So it moves horizontally. Contamination into uh, one of these wells here, you'll be able to see groundwater move when I pump the well over here. moving with the groundwater as it is, and you can see the speed will change once you start to pump the well. So the policies are looking at if, if we've got these activities on the landscape that could th threaten the drinking water, how do we minimize the risk of those threats? So we look at existing threats and then future ones. So essentially the policies are looking at how can we manage the existing threats that are already on the landscape um, and how can we prevent future threats. The committee ha has embraced the idea of using best management practices as one of the, the ways to, uh, to protect source water. Uh, from the beginning, uh, 2005, we've tried our best to keep the public involved every step of the way um, across all of the three source protection regions. Um, we've involved, uh, right from the beginning, the um, Source Protection Committee selection, uh, straight through to what we're currently doing now is the um, public consultation for the draft proposed Source Protection Plan. And so during that whole process, what we've tried to do is involve as many of the sectors in the local community as possible, um, including for sure the municipalities, uh, the agricultural sector, um, local First Nations communities, um, the commercial and industrial uh, sectors. Um, also the landowners from the regions, they've all had invites to public meetings um, and uh, so we've, we've really tried our best to keep all the stakeholders involved, um, give them many opportunities to make comments and uh, ask questions along the way. Uh, what we're on right now is our 700 or 7,500 cubic meter in-ground reservoir. 
It complements our two water towers uh, to have uh, mainly for fire protection. But it also has water. If the, any equipment goes down, then we have this water that we have already pumped out of the ground that we can use in case of emergencies. Uh, the water is treated in the control center building, comes out into the reservoir, and we force it through the reservoir, back and forth, back and forth, through the reservoir, just to make sure uh, nothing goes stagnant in the reservoir, the water quality stays good. The retention time in the reservoir is about 19 hours, and then it goes back through the building where there's high lift pumps that pump it up and into the distribution system. Justice O'Connor's after the Walkerton uh, inquiry uh, came out with a whole series of recommendations and the prov provincial government decided they were going to implement all of them and he stressed throughout that uh, multi-barrier system. Uh, multi-barrier system is from source to tap. The first barrier is source water protection, making sure your source water is as clean as possible so you it's easier to clean, you don't have uh, the pathogens, you don't have the chemicals you could have if you didn't have that barrier. Wasbrook gets its water source from the Chanel Cart, which is a uh, stream uh, within the St. Clair River system. And as it flows from Lake Huron into Lake St. Clair, the quality of water is excellent. And so rather than pull out of the Sydney River, which is sometimes uh, very muddy, sometimes uh, susceptible to a low flow, uh, we've actually constructed an intake overland to the nearest fast flowing source, which is the Chanel Cart. And that provides us with a very good source of potable water for uh, our intake uh, and our manufacturing system. IPZ stands for Intake Protection Zone and it's an area demarked around an intake which provides us the ability to regulate what happens on the lands, whether it's commercial, manufacturing, business, residential, agricultural, these activities have an impact on the quality of the water that uh, surrounds our intakes. So IPZs allow us to examine the area, examine the activities, and then determine if there's mitigation that we need to um, seek from the landowners or whether there's prohibitions to certain uses uh, that uh, we need to put into regulation and law. So it's an opportunity for public authorities to have a dialogue with the landowners and discuss how it is that we can best provide a protected water source for our potable water supply.